official opposition in Saskatchewan is among those calling for more restrictions. Ryan Miley is the leader of Saskatchewan's NDP. Dr. Miley, thanks for joining us. Thanks very much, Paul. Um, your premier is continuing to resist calls for tougher measures, particularly ahead of this Thanksgiving weekend. I say Dr. Miley because, of course, you have a unique perspective uh, being a medical doctor as well. Why do you think the premier has resisted bringing in tougher measures? It's extremely hard to understand, Paul. We've had all the evidence in front of us for months and have been making the calls, uh, urging this government to act, as have Saskatchewan doctors, as have public health experts, as have really anyone who's concerned about the health of Saskatchewan people. And yet Scott Moe and Paul Merriman, his health minister, have chosen not to act. They've had the evidence in front of them, knowing that the Delta wave was going to cause a great deal of damage in Saskatchewan. And instead of acting, they've resisted masking, resisted any efforts to increase vaccination rates, and now are doing nothing around gathering limits as we head into one of the big holidays of the, of the year. And these deliberate choices have cost over 100 people their lives in the last month. More will die. And it's unfathomable why a premier put in place, elected by the people of Saskatchewan to support and protect them, would make these deliberate choices that result in people's deaths. I think part of the explanation from the premier would be that a lot of people uh, in Saskatchewan have had at least one dose uh, of the vaccine uh, and that it would be unfair to them to have a broad lockdown. What, what, what do you think about that? Taking the evidence-based public health measures to keep people safe is fair to everyone. You know, allowing our healthcare system to be overwhelmed by COVID cases, allowing this many deaths to occur, that's what's truly unfair. And the fact of the matter is, what you got to in that question is, I believe, what is likely Mr. Moe's motivation is there's people he doesn't want to bother uh, by making these decisions. He's pandering to certain elements within his own party. Uh, he's worried about the, the Buffalo party on his right and the anti-vax, anti-mask elements within his own caucus. And as a result, has chosen not to lead has chosen not to take the courageous measures to keep people safe. He chose to put politics before people. In that I used to live in Saskatoon, I looked at the forecast for this weekend in that city, and it's going to be down to zero, as high as 10 degrees. So the premier is, you know, with an eye to Thanksgiving weekend, advising people to meet outdoors as much as possible and to be aware of guests' vaccination status. If that's not prudent enough, what measures should be put in place ahead of Thanksgiving? There's one province in Canada without gathering restrictions other than Saskatchewan, and that's Newfoundland and Labrador, where there are almost no COVID uh, transmission happening right now. Here in Saskatchewan, we have the worst rates of transmission, hospitalization, and deaths. We are in a terrible situation. And yet this premier has refused the calls of the mayor of Saskatoon to have gathering limits in his city. He's refused the call of public health experts to have gathering limits. It is a very obvious decision what needs to happen, and he's chosen not to. And he's chosen not to despite having all of the evidence in front of him that that's what's needed. He has the evidence in front of him. However, he and his health minister, who I hope will uh, not be in that position for very long, they have chosen to hide that information. They don't share that modeling with doctors, with the public. They know how bad things are going to get. They know what would work to save lives, and they're choosing not to do it. Is, isn't the real problem here the, the same one that has perplexed, you know, every politician in every jurisdiction effectively on the planet, and that is how to get everybody else vaccinated? I mean, what would you do to get that number higher in Saskatchewan? The, the interesting thing here in Saskatchewan, we were leading the way. We were doing really well in the early phases, great deal of... Uh, eagerness among the population to get vaccinated. Then in the summertime, instead of doing what, what we called on him to do, have a last mile strategy to get us to that point where we're truly safe and truly protected, Scott Mo chose to say it was over. In the middle of July, he gave up, gave up on the fight against COVID entirely. And the results were very clear. Our vaccination rates dropped so quickly. People just stopped going stopped thinking that they were at any risk. He put people at risk and he took actions that reduced us getting to the level of vaccination we need to get safe. 
Now, my message to the people of Saskatchewan is get your shot. Absolutely. That is the most important and best thing you can do. But to Scott Moe, why didn't you help? Meanwhile, he's announced that the province's emergency operations center will now manage the pandemic response, arguing it will, you know, ensure a more coordinated decision making process. What do you think this will actually do for the healthcare system? No one really knows if that will have any effect. Even the, the person who is in charge of that was questioning whether it would have much influence. What I saw today was a premier who was wanting to shift responsibility instead of take responsibility. He has failed us throughout this. His choices, his deliberate decisions have cost people their lives. He will not acknowledge that. He will not show any remorse and he won't take the actions. Today, what he needed to announce was that he wasn't just musing about federal help, that it was going to be landing. Those nurses are already arriving in Alberta. We need them here in Saskatchewan right now. And he refused to introduce or even give clear guidance on gatherings as we go into Thanksgiving. He didn't take those actions. That's what needed to happen. Instead, he shifted responsibility, shifted blame, and uh, was pretty shifty when asked about the use of ivermectin. And I got to say, while I've, got the, while I've got the platform, folks out there, ivermectin, it's not good for COVID. Get your shot. Ivermectin, another puzzler. Um, you know, wh why people do these things, I think, uh, is, a, is a question many people have. Um, have you had any direct communication with the Premier or the Health Minister? We, we've invited both onto the show. Uh, they have not accepted uh, the invitations. I wonder what your bottom line advice would be to them uh, if you could give it to them. We've extended a, a number of invitations as well. Uh, since the beginning of the pandemic, we've been ready to come around the table, get rid of the politics, work on the best solutions for Saskatchewan people. We've invited the Premier to return to the House and answer questions. We've got the same response as you and, uh, and so many folks in your profession have, which is silence. This is a government that has refused to take any accountability or responsibility. If they are watching this uh, now, I would say, uh, to Mr. Mo, get a new health minister. Uh, and, you know, perhaps you should be looking for new work as well. But in the meantime, uh, take some action. Your choices have cost people their lives. We can make that less. We, can, we can't stop where we are today. We can't end the harm that you've caused, but we can decrease it. Take action now. Listen to Dr. Shahab. Listen to Dr. New, Newdorf and other experts. Protect Saskatchewan people. We need you to lead. One last thing, just as a doctor, I think the question a lot, so many people have, does this ever end? Do, do you see an end to this uh, ever? You know what I mean? You know, I, I do say when people ask me that, the, the smartest people in the world have no idea, but I have hope. Uh, we, you know, we didn't think we were going to be in, in this for this long. We need to take the steps, every step we can to reduce the damage at every stage, but I have hope. I'm seeing the discussion around availability of the vaccine for young children. I've got a kid in school. Actually, no, I don't. I have a kid who's missing school for a couple of days because he's got a runny nose and we're waiting for a COVID test. I'm one of those parents who's worried about this and keeping my fingers crossed that we'll get a vaccine for kids and that everyone else will step up and get their shots. That is how we end it. It's possible, but until it's over, we can't pretend that it is. Ryan Marley, thanks for speaking with us today. Thanks very much, Paul. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.